And the Terps within 11. Ravis Vasquez last year averaged 17 points, a little under six rebounds, and a little under seven assists. Well, they came and doubled Pargo, but he should be able to make a play out of this. Under 10 on the shot clock. Pargo, they need to get it on. He does. And a back tap by Heitfeld. Day and Vasquez. Vasquez behind the back. And one. Vasquez did a terrific job of taking his body today. Now, Gravis Vasquez with a connection to that man on the Gonzaga bench. We'll tell you all about it coming back. Gonzaga leading this one by nine. Gravis Vasquez attacking the hoop and getting the bucket plus one. And he's got the connection to Tom Lloyd over on the Gonzaga bench. For more on that, Andy Katz. That's right. Tommy Lloyd, the Gonzaga assistant, really is almost like their international scout. He really helped them get uh, Roni Turioff, J.P. Batista. Spends a lot of time in Europe and South America and Canada and all over the place. And it was Tommy that actually placed Gravis Vasquez at Montrose Christian in Maryland uh, with Stu Vetter. And uh, just didn't work out where he would end, uh, end up going to Gonzaga. Ends up staying local at Maryland. And it was interesting at the Wednesday night event here prepping for this tournament. Tommy Lloyd bumped into Vasquez and in all, in, of all places waiting in line to get a picture with Mickey Mouse. And Vasquez then was telling all his Maryland teammates, hey, it was this guy that got me here in the U.S. So you never know where you're going to meet up again. And you also know, as you know, Fran, a lot of times one coach will place a kid in the States and ends up not getting him. Well, that's true. Montrose Christian, Stu Venner's a great coach. A lot of those kids end up staying in the ACC in the Big East and Gonzaga a long way. In fact, Tom Roy told me, John, that uh, they had to move quickly to get Grievous Vasquez into a high school, and Montrose Christian was the one school that was willing to do all the paperwork and take care of it within a week, and just didn't work out, but that's the way recruiting works. And also nice to see Mickey Mouse reconnecting people. <laughs> Deep three downs, Pargo right there for the board. Gray's jumper no good, and Heitfeld pulls down the rebound. I don't know whether they got Mosley or Neal. They got Neal. Well, Heitfeld has had an effect on this second half. This is a team that has six players in the early season averaging between 9 and 15 points a game. But I mentioned the X factor Heitfeld because of the size and strength inside. Zags pounding the boards. Stephen Gray hasn't really gotten going at either of the first two games. Great shooter. Shot over 45% from three last year. Downs off the mark. Neal pulls down the board, tosses ahead to the freshman Mosley. That's good defense by Downs, keeping Vasquez out of the lane. Fight for the rebound. Gray comes away with it. Wow. Downs hanging. Brown is underneath, and he's fouled. Well, Saturday night on ABC, Heisman frontrunner Sam Bradford leads number three Oklahoma against Big 12 rivals Oklahoma State. Locked in a virtual tie in the BCS rankings with Texas. A road win would be huge for Oklahoma. Give them a great chance for a spot in the BCS championship. Saturday night football presented by Southwest Airlines. Part of Rivalry Week presented by Samsung Mobile ABC Saturday, 8 Eastern. Well, there's still a plausible scenario that could end up with Oklahoma and Texas meeting in the national title game. Florida State, if they knock off Florida, and Alabama beats Florida in the SEC title game. Gonzaga using its height advantage here in the second half and really dominating on the offensive glass. Downs cutting to the hoop, but he traveled, I do believe, and Hightower with the call. He'll go the other way. And that is 13 turnovers on the Zags. So who do you got? In the national championship? The whole game? thing. I think Oklahoma is the best team in the country right now. 
Certainly Florida's played very well, but it's hard to tell with how strong the SEC has been all year. Neal and Fargo fight for the loose ball. Who has it? And it'll be Maryland basketball. This is a danger zone for the Zags because they've played very well offensively so far. They're shooting over 50%. But Maryland is within a couple of stops and a couple of big baskets of being right back in this ball game. Hayes will try another three. And a fight for the rebound. Sacre grabs the board. And the foul. Brian Kersey had Dino Gregory. Now this is the type of battle that Gonzaga needs. Take a look at all those bodies flying in the paint. And you see Sacre come out of it. And there's a there's a there's a rule where if you swing your elbows excessively and there's no contact it can be called a violation. It's very rarely called. I'd love to see officials call it more. It would eliminate physical play inside. Sacre has it blocked. Gets it back and he's fouled. The seven foot sophomore from British Columbia. Doing the tough work down low. This is only a second ball game. He was injured in. In the summer, surgery in October, so he gives Mark Few another big body inside. He's not developed offensively yet, John, but you see the great size and strength. We got Dino Gregory on the foul. That's his fourth. 14 fouls on Maryland, two on Gonzaga. As you think of Gonzaga through the course of the long season, guys like Ira Brown and Sacre, they're not, they're gonna be second level players. But they give you some toughness and grit. Hayes pushing and he's fouled. So Eric Hayes will go to the line. And a rare free throw opportunity for the Terps. Sacre charged with his second. Ten point advantage for Gonzaga. Winner of this one meets Tennessee in the championship game here at the Milk House on Sunday night. This game is a long way from over, but uh, once Georgetown lost, the buzz here at the Milk House was a potential matchup with the Terps. Hoyas and, and uh, the Terps have not met in the regular season since 94, and then I think it was 79 80 before that. A hotly contested rivalry. That's yeah, two times since 79 80, the one yep. NCAA tournament battle. You think about Lefty Drizel and John Thompson and their rivalry that they had. Of course, our own Lenny Elmore here this week played on some of those Maryland teams that clocked the Hoyas before they got their program rolling. Sacre the follow in the flush. Uh, you can see the Gonzaga bench right now very excited for guys like Ira Brown last night, Robert Sacre tonight. Day blocks it. Bolden has it. Up ahead to Gray. And the lead is a dozen. I mentioned Austin Day. One of the underrated things about him. He's not a great defender yet, but he is a terrific shot blocker. And a timeout called by Gary Williams. Now the length of Austin Day comes into play here as they get out in transition. But you see Sacre doing a lot of dirty work. Physical play. Of course, his dad played in the NFL, Greg LaFleur. Tight end for the New Orleans Saints. Well, so there's the possibility of that matchup between Georgetown and Maryland. Andy Katz, it's been a